Hi, today we're going to introduce some ground techniques that uh, Kapap Academy is exploring together with uh, Professor John Machado from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Okay, so now here we have the choke, the choke hold, okay, happening. Okay, it's a common mistake. People try to go this way. As I go this way, I'm choking myself because I'm turning against the choke. Each time I turn this way, I'm choking myself. Okay, so here the principle of the gi is that the gi will teach you uh, the direction that you must go to escape. Okay, because I have to open the choke up. When you have no only no gi training, no, no, the person is just hugging you. If a person is just hugging me, okay, now it's okay. You can go this way, that way, it doesn't matter. There's nothing on my neck, so you can go any side. All right. So here now, when you have the choke, okay, what I'm gonna do here, I'm going up to escape this way in favor, okay? So I have a few elements happening here. My hip, okay, and the arm control, okay? The, the most important being first the arm, just to stop the motion, see? If I get worried just about the body, but do not forget about the arm, he can choke me very fast, okay? So first I'm gonna trap the arm, to stop the elbow, the hand, Okay, like that. And now I'm escaping into the person. So now doing the, this whole movement, I'm not being pressure on my neck. Okay, now I can go all the way to the side. Okay, which now I have already a joint lock situation here. Okay, and I can pursue with the, with the throw, finishing, okay, with a strike or with an arm bar, all right? Okay, so now here we have the knife situation, okay? So very similar to the choke, okay? The escape will be on the same, on the same side, on the opening, okay? But now even more important so because you, you cannot afford any mistake because now it's a life threatening. One mistake, you're dead. So here, as you go for your control, okay? It's very important as you go here, I'm actually pushing the knife in at first here to release the pressure in case it's too tight. Okay, if you have, it's too much here, as you go for the control, you actually push it in. So you open a little gap. As soon as you do that, you open the knife. Okay, so be, okay, one, two. Now my whole body, my hip, my shoulders, okay, I'll step to the opening here. Now you're back on the same situation we have, the angle here, I have the leverage, okay. Now this moment, the knife can turn into him, Okay, can turn into the opponent, or I pursue to the ground. Once you go to the ground, okay, you have the control, you can send back to him, okay? Can go into a lock, okay, or disarm all together. All right, so another idea here is to, is a concept that we, 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 are, we are developing here, is to use the, the mount scapes in, in Jiu Jitsu, with the knife defense and start putting everything together. So it's something that needs to be worked very well, okay, but it's a concept that we're discussing. So here, bang, you can block, okay, and bring directly into our Americana finishing hold, which I already have, or pursue that, okay, with the escape. So keep going, going for the finishing hold. Or what you can do here, Okay, now as you block, change sides, trap. Now the blade is facing the opponent. So now you gotta be really careful because as I raise my body now, okay, the knife's against, against the opponent. Okay, so he's, he's stabbing himself and I'm gonna push very careful uh, into his body. See, so the knife's going that way, okay. Even if the fake knife, you must be careful because you can hurt yourself. Okay, so one more time. So bang, bang, bang. Okay, hip up, and then I turn into the, very careful. And here, okay, the control is still, okay, still pursuing the finishing here, okay? Now this uh, is another idea from Capap with the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's a concept where it doesn't matter how he strikes the knife, a block, okay, one more time, block, now I can directly into a finishing hold here, okay? And pursuing 
with the upa escape up turning okay now you can keep doing the the armbar all right okay you have the the full americana of the guy here okay the second idea will be to to block switch okay switch hands so one two bring it once you get this side bring your elbow in so you make sure the knife is pointing at him okay and now it's very dangerous even to practice with a fake knife with a hard knife you gotta be really careful so i use a soft knife a knife to practice or keep on the side for now because as i do the upa that's it the knife goes in okay and then you keep turning okay and you still have the the strike over here it's over so it's a deadly escape so try use a soft knife to practice that safely okay but uh, the the idea is uh, realistic is to it's for real okay the same idea now we will apply to the gun uh, defense okay and uh it's not a position to be i don't like to be on the end of the barrel but here is the same idea the same mountscape the same idea of uh, getting out of the range of fire okay in as quick as you can being that the priority then the escape the second priority so here okay will be the the arms my arms are already up as you keep in a mounted defense anyways working on the gun and on the wrist okay pushing to the side as i move my head to the side so here you notice that i'm not flat on my back it's too much grinding on the ground see i'm up a little bit See, so you, that's why the core is important, so you can do this move very fast, okay? One, now two, bring it in, so my elbow, my whole body is coming in, so I point it to him again. So now, the same idea, okay, here, upa, turn, see? And I, I can keep here, the gun, if the gun didn't fire here now, I can take it away. Okay, so now let's talk about the turtle position, some, a concept. I mean, can apply any situation, it's a concept, so it goes anywhere. You know, here with Fred, okay? I'm gonna talk about, let's say the, the guillotine. Okay, for example, the guillotine attack. Okay, the first one. So my neck will be here. And this will work. Okay, so my neck's in control. So here, if this arm, I'll have one point, okay? And if my head will be the second point, okay? So I will go for the takedown. As I go here, I keep rotating in, okay? Like I'm coming to this position here, see? So like this, by facing him, my head facing him, it's already the escape from the guillotine, all right? Because if I follow, I'm throwing him and following myself. I'm putting my neck into the guillotine again in case he insists on the position. So one more time, okay? One, two, three, four, I'm out, okay? The common mistake is to follow. I'll do one time, okay? If you throw and follow your neck into the situation, now I have to restart the escape, okay? If it happens, it's a whole different situation. So it's what with this drill right now, you avoid the guillotine altogether. You escape, okay? Now same application from the side, okay? So Fred has a, I'm on the turtle, the side control. I'll stretch my leg, the back leg, okay? As I stretch the back leg, I have the second point over here. Okay, as I slide my knee inside. So we move again, one, slide my knee inside, I have the second point. Bang, I'm on top. Okay. Okay. One more time from the other side. Is that? Okay, so we one leg out. Okay. As I slide my knee in, my arm is against his body, so I have the two points right here. One, and the leg. Two, okay. Okay, I'm on top. 
okay? You can follow four combinations, all right? Okay, so now we will talk about the control here on this situation, this specific the side control, and that where I'm looking, okay, for control points. So here, in a, I also talked to uh, Avi and Albert about this, the how stand you have the two points, then uh, the application on the ground, how you go, you go from two, you try to get to three and four, okay? So you're like a pyramid, okay? Or, or a cube, okay? So like a square. So for example, once you get to a side control, if I have this base here, okay? People, they do a lot of mistakes because they stay too, their legs too close together, okay? And then they are off base this way, you see? So here, what I'm looking for is the arm has one control, see? I extend my leg up, so they give me another control over there on my foot. Plus I have my hip, okay, centered on the ground, okay? And here I lean forward to avoid the push to the back. Let's see you do a rocking chair, Fred. See, to avoid this escape, okay? So I, I with my foot here, yeah, go slow. See, oh, I'm leaning forward. He's not going anywhere, see? With, because I have a good solid position here, okay? With the four points right now, the elbow, the hip, and both legs are working, okay? So I have base one, two, three, four right now, okay? If he changes, I change. So here, I can switch to the to the front control here, okay? The arm over the shoulder, so not my knee against the hip, okay? So I have again the four points, okay? So here, my arms, my knee, and my foot on the other side, okay? If I need to switch this way, Okay, same thing, I have the same situation, the leg, this foot, my hip and my arm. And again, I'm leaning forward because when you're side, you, you have to watch the, the back push here. So I'm strong here, so I push, I have the control, plus this hand here, you can hold on. That's when you, you can use the cloth, you can hold on here on, the, on his clothes, or you can hook the leg itself to give you extra control. All right, and then you're ready to move on to the mount, okay? Or start operating here, the finishing holds. But all of the, the next position, not the finishing, will be a result of your control. If you don't have a good control, you have nothing, okay? So one more time. So good drills that you can do here, okay? Will be from the side control to switch, okay? Square off, switch to this side again. Okay, now back into a cross face situation. So the four points again, both arms and both legs. Okay, switching this way again. See, as I'm switching, things are already coming handy here. See, the arm is already outside just because I'm switching. Okay, this arm is already vulnerable. So I can go for a submission hold here. Okay, and then you start. Okay. Switch, walk around to the other side, switching from side to side. I have the mount, okay? Square off, okay? Switch this side again, back to the front again, cross face, okay? So these kind of drills will help you to build this concept of the three points or four points on the ground. Let's talk about uh, the, uh, the chokes, the concepts. Okay, that are more important than how many techniques you know, but how well you do the techniques that you know. And the, and the importance to understand the concept of the choke. Okay, so here is my student, Luis Baek. Okay, so a simple collar choke. Okay, I'm gonna start from here. Okay, so I'm gonna develop two points here of control. Okay, so I'll bring his head here, down. So once I bring his head down, okay, I have my hand. My forearm blocking here, my hand going under, and I have the collar. So if it stays here, of course, I have the, the finishing. But there, it's not, because I only have two points right now, he can find the window here of escape, always, okay? Going out that way, which is the opening here. So I bring him down again, right? One 
one time. Okay, all right. So now I'll close that window. So you start building the relative position because no technique is a 100% every single time. You, it's part of the, the training to build up the realistic approach. So you go for a technique, he starts escaping. You adapt and go to the next step to look for another point of control and he's looking for another point of, another window to escape and so forth, so on. So one, as I go here now, I'll bring him to the side to close it. Okay, so now, violence. He can escape out that way. Very good. Okay, so now here, I'll try here, okay, to trap his arm, you know what I mean? And try to look for a better control. I will keep progressing so I can succeed on that choke, okay? Let's work another approach now here. Okay, so as I, as I bring his, his head down now, I'll step up so I trap him under my legs, under my hips for the choke. But he can still do the throw, the takedown, and escape. So you keep progressing. I keep progressing on my attack. Okay, that's to develop the relative position. Okay, so one more time. So now I'll look for an even better position. So this way. One, two, three. So now, okay, bye. I have a position because I have too many points in my favor now. So once you start understanding that, you'll be more proficient in your finishing holds and you are helping each other to escape from the positions, okay? Okay, so now we will demonstrate here uh, some drills for you to build your reflex against multiple opponents. So very important to, to engage fast and block your opponent before you get kicked into your head. And you must understand that in martial arts, I mean, especially on the ground, you must have a strong core, okay? Because if you don't, you take too long to move, too long to ride, you cannot perform your techniques. So the, all those drills are a fun way for you to develop that. So you just take your time, build up little by little, your core will be like stronger than, than ever. So Luis, start slow, demonstrating, okay? Good. And slower you do, harder it is, okay? So he's bringing his hip really high. So less contact with the surface. So you, you move it easier on the ground, okay? So you're working everything here. So little by little, you know, you start developing the, you keep that this feet, back up a bit and then, yeah, I'm aumentando a velocidade. Yeah, I'm aumentando. Yes, when I'm sticking on Aqui, bloqueio a cabeça. Isso. Vou tentar te chutar aqui, defende, traz a perna lá. Sweep in there. Next time, sweep in there, sweep me right up. Go. Sweep her. Raspa ela e raspa eu, vai. Eu não vou ver. Slow, slow. Venha, faz comigo e me raspa também. Very good. Okay. Next thing that we are explaining, uh, it's the core concept of kapap mixed with skills that we picked up from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Professor here uh, will show and talk about some applications from the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu along with his student Luis. And I will later on explain how and Abi will perform the same techniques or based, based on same principles with combative applications with a handguard. So professor, please take over. Okay, Luis. So here we're gonna do some uh, movements, some drills that we use for conditioning to confuse your muscles to, so your body is ready to react to any situation. So let's start, Luis. The rocking chairs, they're good, back and forth. Switching base. Você sentado, sentando indo para cima, isso. Isso. Na minha direção. So here we use that for many situations. Yeah, vai lá, vai lá. Ó, come here, so, so he can come on top for the takedowns. From the guard, push, sit up. So he's ready to come for the sweeps. Okay? Always facing the target, sempre always moving around, de novo, posicionando lá. 
Senta, já vai ter que So the, the idea is to always keep moving, always facing the target, looking for the for the angles to bring it to the fight or to move away to keep the dynamics of the situation. You know, you do rounds of that. Okay, so you can do minute rounds, 15 second rest, another minute round. So I do like five, six rounds. Okay. Abby will take over now and it will show the same exact move. I will use the rocking chair in, into uh, pop applications. Abby is holding the handgun and he's falling back. This situation can occur from many, many angles. He will drop to the floor and look how Abby is using his core muscles in coming up and falling back down when he's keeping his uh, uh, the contact with the target all the time. And he's keeping uh, his sights or his contact with the threat, the, the direction goes to the same direction that the threat comes from. If a uh, professor is the threat, Avi will sit with the threat and will be ready for that angle every time. And now he has a contact from this side, so he's responding to this area. And again, we see the same exact move that we've seen before taken from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Based on that move, we are moving our core area and falling back and forth, keeping our balance and our target in the same line. We, for my student Ahmed, we're gonna demonstrate the training for condition. It is very important to get to know your body is your tool, your first tool, so you get to become familiar with it. So all those exercises are designed for you to understand your balance so you, you learn to keep the flow, see? Because you lose your balance, you have to first regain your balance to be able to do anything else. So it's the important of this move to always stay from, go from one move to the next, stay in balance, watching your form. So you are ready to adapt that flow to the, to the relative position when you need it, okay? In a combative situation. So I'm mean, gonna go through yeah, a basic routine that we do at the school. So it's a stretch, but you're also moving, using the, the movement that you're gonna use in training. You can get, must do that all in a freestyle mode to develop that, be, feel comfortable with your body because this will help you on your, on your training. Okay, thank you, man. Another drill here for your defense on the bottom, for the escapes here, will be to train the, the upa here. So first I met, will do by, by himself from side to side over the shoulder. So he raise his hip, going over the shoulder, reaching for the ground. Right? So you can do sets, you know what I mean? You can do by time, like a minute each exercise to develop your core. And, and this is the move that you use in training, okay? 
The, and now we're gonna do a variation, that's good. Luis here now, on the side control, okay? Where he would, he would train to do their move with the weight on top. One, so he can do the same thing, two, to use it with the resistance. This for conditioning, okay? You can put your, do with your hand under too, turn them under, you can work your ass, good. See, he's almost already escaping, but don't escape yet. Yeah, just work the exercise. Good, yeah. You can switch your arms now. Go the other side. Oh, see? So these are good exercise to do. The leader wants to bring it to the techniques much easier for your body to perform the technique. Very good, very good. Okay, now let's talk about the guard here. So I'm the officer. I have the weapon, okay, and I'm fighting this man here on this situation, okay? So if I try to pull the gun from the close guard, the problem is that the, the range is too close, so it's very easy for him to use, use his hands and fight for the weapon, and I, I might be in a very bad situation here myself. So here, I to come here, it's too risky, so for small people for women very, you gotta work different angles so here what we can do here in this situation my hand always in front is to open the guard so my feet are out of range out of the field of fire here because if you shoot the guy i'm shooting my legs too my feet so here as i open i upper to increase the range and now i can shoot the leg or i can go under and shoot him his groin and my feet are not in the range of fire. Okay, that's the initial idea. As you develop better understanding off the guard now, would be better to have my hands blocking, open the range, okay? By do, escaping my hip, bring my legs up, okay? Or just getting my knees together here already. So different approach you can do. So I can block him right away from making it hard for him for reach the gun. Okay, because this shooting. Now it's much better, because I can increase the range, okay? Now I can shoot from here, okay? I can still shoot from here. I can lift my foot, block the arm. Now it's even better, shoot, shoot. I have total control here. And here also, I can change. So here, I can push, and now, be on a, in a total different position now to finish this combat. So you can open the range. Okay? So just some of the Jiu-Jitsu ideas now with the gun. Combine with Kapap to try to understand the ground so you don't pull your gun on a, when you're in the range for him to take the gun away from you. Okay? Thanks, Luis. Okay. Let's cover this idea here of the side control. When you're training in the school or when you're on a street situation. See, when you're training, you control really tight and uh, you're looking for the openings for the arm, for the chokes, for the, you're more concerned about the control. After that, you look for the finishing holes, but on the street, you can add other elements, okay? So, like uh, some techniques that you don't use in the, in the academy every day. So things of this nature, when you, you bring him up a little bit. See, you get your fist under his spine here. So you push him right on top of the, put the weight now. So you have the, the bone hurting him. So a lot of pain compliance, a lot of pain, pressure points on the street is very important, okay? So that's one thing we can do here. The other thing is, is to open the range, see? Because when you're tight, it's hard to strike, but when you open up, you can not only strike, we have more leverage, but you can use your knees here, okay? Use your knees on him, as well as you can strike at the same time. And as you have that, it's, it's always good to change his angle, because here, you have to always be watching this arm so this arm don't reach for your groin. So here, it's always good, it's a good choice to push him to the side, so you have a better angle to strike, you can trap, okay? Now we have a total control here, okay? You can strike this guy. Okay, back away even, kick, move out if I have to. 
Okay, so those are some of the street applications you can use here. Instead of just being glued with him the whole time. That's good for control, good for the school, but you're on the street, let's work the idea. Having the, the fist under, moving, okay? So a lot of pain compliance here, okay? All right, or opening up, use your knees, okay, change the angle, okay? All right? Okay, so you have to keep an open mind. It's not always one range. You can open up anytime you need.